Hey, it's James, and I hope you guys are having a good day, you uh, guys and girls. Hey, so want to jump into it. Um, I'm going to apologize if I sound a little nasally. I'm just getting over the, we'll call it the uh, 2020 flu. How about that, you know, for the tubes type thing. So um, what I'm going over, this is number video number two in the uh, Rebel Capitalist speakers. I'm going over the synopsis of what they said and just giving you a very condensed version of all the information that they gave. And here's just the, the guest speakers right here. We're going to go over all of them. Um, already did Mark Moss, um, Lynette Zhang. Um, all of them were amazing. Some of them stuck out, st uh, stood out quite uh, more than the rest, um, but just with the, with the information they had to give. But, but it, was, it was an awesome conference. And this MC was amazing. Talk to him afterwards. He is, he is absolutely amazing. He actually had... Um, done radio quite a bit and so he's got just an amazing voice um and a very good MC. so today we're going to talk to uh talk about what dr chris marson said um here's his website and everything but <clears throat> his talk again a lot of this is financial based and what's happening in the world economy economy and his talk was on energy right and we're going to jump into this um but this is going to be a two-part thing because the first part is going to be what he said and the second part is going to be um, a little bit of, of my, what I'm going to throw in there, right? And because I've been investing in energy for the last year and a half, two, about two years now, uh, since, since sometime in 2020, because I saw the writing on the wall. And so I'm going to, uh, explain what he said and piggyback off of it. And I'll tell you this right now, like one of the things that I loved, I loved about his presentation is, you know, let me, let me say this, you know, when you have been following, um, a hypothesis or following a um, not a guesstimate about the world, but hey, you think this is going to happen? This is going to happen, right? Like all the arrows point this way, and you just kind of go and chug it, chug it, chug it down the line, and then you start to get affirmations along the way, right? By other people who are saying the same thing. That's what this guy did, um, and this is going to be a spoiler alert, but basically, oil and gas is going to stay high. Uh, energy in general is going to stay high for quite some time. We're going to dive deep into it, but there is going to be a shortage of energy, uh, especially oil and gas, but um, uh, we're going to go into why. So <clears throat> with further ado, we're going to go into it. So uh, first thing he said was um, energy is hitting its limits. Well, let me let me stop and say there that he put this this chart on first right and this is our consumption rate okay so in other words this is kind of historical graph um you know like in the 1800s 1850s we did a lot of biomass so in other words what is biomass so that's everything from from cutting a tree down and burning it for your heating and for your cooking to burning a cow dung you know you, you did, we didn't know that you might not know this but in the 1800s sometimes they they boiled their water their soup they they cooked over cow dung cow poop right that is dried out and fibrous because of the the grass that they ate that they didn't digest they just pooped out and you could literally light it on fire right and so um all of that is a traditional and then in the 1900s we started to do a bit of coal type thing 1950s but somewhere around here we started to get oil right and oil and with that natural gas has been cons has been um going up up and up until then, especially in the in the 2000s, right? You can see the consumption rate, how it just goes straight up. Um, so our world, our, the energy in our world is mostly a mixture of coal, oil, and gas, okay? Um, we are looking towards alternative sources, right? Because we know eventually, at least in our world, eventually they, they, they'll run out, okay? So nuclear, it's that much that we're using, right? Hydropower. Not bad. Um, wind, solar, modern biofuels, and other renewables. So if you take all of these, so basically this last little sliver right there, right? Um, can I click on it? No? Okay. Um, these are non renewable. I guess hydropower could, you know, that that's a little better, but that has its limits because let's say you live in, um, you know, Nevada. You ain't getting hydropower, right? It's a desert, okay? You live in uh, Tucson, Arizona, and no hydropower there, right? Um, so it's very uh, 
location dependent, right? So wind, solar, modern, uh, modern biofuels, and other renewables, and you can even add traditional biofuels into that. It's not enough to 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 use to um, for our needs, right? They want the big, the big green push. It's great, and I think intellectually we're all or in a in a sense of um, not not morals but standards. Hey, I think we all want to go green because we all know um, oil and gas is is um, you know it's not renewable. However. We can't just make the switch. I mean, this is like, look at that. Look at these three. That's like 90%, yeah, um, of what we use, you know. So we're not going to make the switch overnight. And we're going to get into some other data that says, can we make the switch at all, right? <clears throat> okay, so we started with that and said, hey, you know, a lot of these these, these, these on top aren't, aren't making up very much of our of our net of our energy consumption right the majority is oil gas and coal okay and then he talked about um oil and gas companies know um well let's put it this way let's just say um so we know we use oil gas and coal the most right and especially oil and natural gas those are just really efficient we can pull those out they are less on the pollutant scale like coal is actually very uh puts out a lot of greenhouse gases lots of smog it's a very dirty source of energy right in comparison oil is a ton better and natural gas it's like that 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 is you know triple a plus right there's there's very little to no um exhaust from it i guess you could say there's no pollution from it it's and actually natural gas right now they're actually qualifying as green renewable energy or something like that it's kind of weird but it's just the way they're justifying it so they can use natural gas um to uh keep the lights on okay because i don't know if you knew this but uh, it's pretty easy to know that oil hey we put in our cars to run our cars right well what about the lights what about um the laptop or the phone that you're using right now to watch this video, did you know that about 80%, maybe 90%, depending on where you are, comes from natural gas? Yeah, they burn natural gas. They take that energy and they put it into batteries and or or straight into the into the lines and ship it to your house. Yeah, that's how it is. So when you when you're looking for your electrical bill and it says 100% renewable. Ha ha ha. They're not talking about these three up here, right? The majority is this purple, okay? Um, but it's considered renewable by its definition now with, with the U.S. and with other countries. Um, so they'll say, hey, you're buying energy for us. Hey, it's 100% renewable. Yay, feel good. In reality, it's it's not renewable. It's natural gas that we're pulling out of the ground, right? Um, so with that, um, energy companies right now uh, are, well, I'll piggyback on that later, but basically he said energy companies are taking a look and they're saying, hey, you know, we're not dumb. We know that we're not going to be able to pull this stuff out for the rest of our lot, you know, out forever type thing. And so basically he says, hey, we can measure the reserves that we have in the ground right now around the world. We can measure our consumption of those and we can do the math and it might not be perfect, but it gives us kind of a, um, a view of how long do we have left? How much fuel do we have left? In other words, if this is the world's gas tank, right, and our tank has this many gallons in it, right, or this many miles that we can drive on it, and we're driving this many miles per year, we've got about 47 more years if we drive at this rate. Okay, um, here's another thing. Oil, uh, so well, let me actually, let me do this. I mean, I get ahead of myself. So oil companies know this, and so they're not going to create boom and bust cycles, right? And this kind of goes into another item that I'll, I'll, I might talk more, more about, but um, they're not going to do boom and bust cycles anymore because they know how much they have left, and they're not going to take risks because a lot of a lot of big government agencies are hating them right now, right? So what is what does this mean? Right? Well, let me stop back and, and go to another one. Energy equals economy. So I don't have this graph up here, but basically um, you can use this one as the same thing. Um, we're in the 2020 or 2022, you know, into the 2020s. Our economy 
and our print is based on any very kind of is really based on production right getting stuff done producing goods and services right the more you do that the better economy you have and the more you make the 1950s we can easily say even with inflation and everything we're producing more now than we did in the 1950s okay we can drive cars we have machines we have computers capabilities that they didn't have in the 1950s right so we don't have just technology um but we also have access to more oil and gas and energy in general right coal as well and so we're producing more and so <clears throat> he and I, i've seen this in other things where it is the amount of energy you use is directly proportional to um, the rate at which your economy grows. In other words, if you take ener if you take energy out of an economy, then the economy slows. Right? You put energy into the economy, it starts to speed up. Or in other words, here's a good way to quantify it: if energy prices are high, economies slow down. If energy prices are cheap, economies go up. Right, and we also see these things happening in the in, in third world or emerging nations. Right, the more money they get, the high, the more energy demands they have. Right, um, so I, I was listening to somebody, and he was in Colombia, and he was saying that his assistants, he sees it with his assistants, um, that you know they're beginning, they're working for him, and he's you know kind of a rich American guy type thing that that moved to Colombia, and they are. Um, working more for him, and they're getting paid more. And so now, instead of instead of um, using a uh, a little motorcycle like a moped type thing that's that gets you know sixty miles a gallon, this little moped that doesn't go you know far faster than thirty five, forty five miles an hour. Now they're getting cars, right? Which use more energy, but you can fit more people in them and stuff like that because they have to for their lifestyle, right? And they don't they don't go back like. They have more needs, more demands, and they're not going back to it. And so, because <clears throat> they're producing more, right? And they can they can do more with that one car than they can a moped, right? I mean, a moped's like two seater the most. The car you can fit you can fit husband, wife, uh, kids, everybody, maybe a neighbor in there too, type thing, or a dog, you know, plus all your luggage in the back um, for like a road trip or something. You can't do that on a moped. So he said that energy equals the economy. Um, and energy companies own no they own, they only have so long left you know that that could be plus or minus we could use more or less type thing um and then he went on on this um here is the issue with renewables right like so again huge here we go we want to get these guys uh let's just say when <laughs> this this little sl these little slivers right here right we want to get those to be as big as these guys, all right? How are we going to get there? Well, we're going to have to build them, and we're going to have to transport them, and we're going to have to set them up. And then when they break, we're going to have to fix them, right? So it begs the question, what are the resources needed for these guys, right? What are the resources needed? Um, well, you need a lot of steel. Okay, you need a lot of fiberglass, you need a bit of copper, aluminum, and then, and that's just to build, you know, the structures and stuff, and then you need some silver, copper, some other stuff, wiring to do it, and you need batteries and stuff, so, at my point, even with, um, that, that's for wind turbines, for solar panels, you need the same thing, you need energy for these type things, how much energy does it, does it take, um, there we go, materials, so, um, here lists all the materials, some, some of the materials for it. My point is this, and this was his point, especially with the, and it comes through a little more with the windmills, right? Is that these things take energy to build, right? They take energy to put up, to set up. Um, I mean, you, you gotta pay somebody to drive out there and put it out. We're not doing it for charity, right? All of that is gonna come from these guys right here, these three big ones, uh, especially oil and gas, okay? So in order, what what the the current administration and then kind of the world, parts of the world, I should say, I should say parts of the world. So you're a lot of big European country, or a lot of first world European countries are pushing this. So is the U.S. Um, what a lot of the world wants to do is they want to automatically just cut these guys out and say, hey, we can just survive off these. 
but we don't have the infrastructure now that but we have to use these guys in order to get these other guys right and they take a lot of energy and here here's the real kicker and this is this is what he he really really um <coughs> what he really drove home is that he believes that renewal right now renewable energy is not a viable source of energy for the world it is not a viable source of energy currently okay he says when renewables can fix themselves in other words if this um this windmill this wind turbine right breaks and you use energy from other windmills and turbines to fix it to um you know uh re-smelt the steel or you know and and the the guys or girls that are going out there to put it back on are driving all electric cars filled by other renewable energy and such like that when it has the ability to fix itself that's when it can take over okay that is when it can take over until then renewables will not be a valid source of energy in our world and that just blew me away right um, so you put these things together, right? You put the fact that, just look at this chart. This is how much we're using in oil, gas, and coal. Or if you want to do another chart, here we go. Another way to look at the, the chart. This is the amount that we are using it, right? Um, so you see, <laughs> this is maybe better. You see these little bitty ones are, that, that is how much, this, this, these little slivers, that is how much we are using um, for renewables. The big charts, that look, look at this. This is how much we're using for non-renewables, okay? Um, renewables are not a valid source of energy for the world right now. I think we all want to be on it, but it's not a, it's not a switch we can flip. And even if we do end up switching, flipping the switch, right, it's, it, it will only continue to be a valid source if they can fix themselves. In other words, if we, we don't need oil and gas coal, if, um, in other words, if they are producing this much energy right here, then we don't need these guys. But until then, we will be heavily dependent on these guys. And this is going to affect economy. So what's gonna happen in the future, right? Oil and gas and coal, they're gonna go up. Energy in general will go up. And what will that do? It will put pressure on the economy, right? In other words, high oil and gas prices leads to recessions, okay? And oil, and we'll go over this in the second video. <coughs> Excuse me. Oil, um, it is the single largest factor in, um, in uh, it's one of the single, I would say one of the two single largest factors in breaking an economy. The other would be um, unserviceable debt, okay? Um, but, so his synopsis is this. Oil and gas companies know the writing on the wall, right? They're not going to go through boom and bust cycles anymore, okay? It's not going to be oils at, you know, $150 a barrel, and then in, in, in 12 months, it's down to $30 a barrel. Nope, nope, not going to happen, right? It'll still moderate, as we'll see in the second video. It'll still go up and down, but it's not going to be hugely boom or bust. Not for the foreseeable future, okay? Number one. Number two renewables are not valid a valid source right now right um and this end there has not been any infrastructure built for these guys there's not been any investment for oil gas and coal so what is and then these guys are were are um they are a limited resource and we can see the writing on the wall so you put those things together and these things are going to go up in price, right? We will all be paying more for them, okay? And I've got a little escape for you on the end of this. Um, and number three, um, this will affect the economy. This is going to pull everything down. So buckle up, right? I think prices uh, prices are going to go down for everything um, because oil and gas affects that. And number four, renewables will replace oil and gas if we can get them to the point to where they, they fix themselves. That was a big one. Um, and then I'll end on this. This is a great analogy they said, is that the, what a current governments want to do, right? You might be skeptical or something like that, but um, these things take time to build out, right? So 
um, either the the renewables or the oil and gas. Well, one of the reasons why why oil and gas is going, is going to keep going up for the foreseeable future is because there has been a lot of investment, like I've said before. And what happens with oil and gas, and really energy in general, like this happens with with um, hydropower, wind, fuel, um, uh, gosh, well, nuclear type thing, um, especially with nuclear. It takes like five or ten years to build this stuff and put it to where to put it to work to where you start to gain your money back, right? And so, um, right now there hasn't been a lot of of investment in the last ten years in oil and gas for a few reasons, but there hasn't been a lot of investment in energy, right? People, it, it, it people want to go green, people want to put in the stock market, people want to do other things with their funds, which is fine. But the bottom line is this. Low investment equals high prices because you can't get as much as easily and um, uh, you can't get as much as easily and so it gets harder to, to put into it, right? You can't expand as fast. And so what the government wants to do is they're trying to put pressure on oil and gas companies. It's two things. One, they're trying to put pressure on oil and gas companies to say, hey, drill more, you know, drill more, like we need help type thing. And oil and gas companies are looking at us, sitting there looking at you like, hey, you said you're going to put us out of work. Why would we want to invest billions of dollars into something and, uh, you know, in five years for a five-year plan and then uh, you try to put us out of, out of work, um, try to bankrupt our business in 10 years, you know, um, why would we want to do that? Number two, uh, num number one, number two, um, these guys, uh, sometimes governments just think, hey, we can just put more money into it and that'll fix it, right? So, hey, the answer to more hydro, wind, solar, modern biofuels and other renewables, the answer to this, to making this little guy, this big guy, is just put more money into it, right? We'll just dump a bunch of tons of money. And then, you know, we'll have it fixed. And the problem is this, is that it takes years to set up these things. It's years, if not a decade. And what they're doing is they're doing it this way. And this stuck with me. I love that. I loved his example. He said, what the government is doing, or governments in this case, is doing, is they're saying, hey, it takes one woman, nine, um, uh, a pregnant woman nine months to make a baby. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to get nine women pregnant, and in one month we'll have a baby. Well, that sounds great. It sounds logical. That's just not how it works. And so um, I'm going to end on that. But Well, actually, I'm going to end on, on something else. But um, that, that is the, that's where we're at, right? In a lot of people's mindset, um, Energy, it's just as, it's just as easy as a light switch, right? You just get nine women pregnant, and in a month you have a baby, right? And the reality is, no, it doesn't work that way. You get nine women pregnant, you'll have nine babies, but it's gonna take nine months, okay? Um, but people aren't in the mindset of that. Even governments aren't in the mindset of that. So, um, secondly, uh, I, as I said earlier, I'm invested heavily in oil and gas right now. Uh, I'm looking for people who are interested in that as well. Uh, if you are interested, contact me. Uh, I do have a, a um, an escape, if you will, for this. Um, because as I tell people, you're going to invest in oil and gas one way or the other. You're either going to be putting it in the pump in your car or you're going to be putting it into an investment. So if you're interested in that, contact me. I'll have some things at the bottom that you can, that you can uh, places you can contact me and reach out to me. But... Um, yeah, you're going to invest in oil one way or the other. Either you're paying at the pump or you're getting returns on your investment. So with that, I'm going to go into, into video two, which is uh, going to be a little bit of what I've learned and kind of applying it to this and some other thing, uh, other items, um, right? And just kind of further showing that, that oil and gas is going to be at a super cycle here. Um, and we are going to be strapped for energy for the foreseeable future.